I have a story here today that got surprisingly little exposure in the Catholic media, probably because it was initially published on a German-language website, and the fact that in English-speaking countries, we're dealing with the peddlers of technology trying to give us medical advice, dealing with the probable implanting of tracking devices. We've been a tad distracted over here, but that's okay, because our story today comes straight from the French Lodge. Literally, actually. I regret to inform you that the Lodge are at it again, and hardly anyone seems to have noticed. So buckle up, because our story today is an example of an absolute brazen attempt at persecuting the church further than it already has been. Today's story is almost absurd. In France, members of the Lodge are increasing the pressure to take the ruined Notre Dame Cathedral from the church and transform it into a secular, non-religious cultural temple, whatever that means. Seriously, I, I don't even want to contemplate what that would entail, but it wouldn't be good. The bishops of the French Catholic Bishops' Conference have been complaining about the absolute state of the church in France, although maybe they should look into a mirror for what the reason is, saying that the church in that country has been subject to absolute corruption of the laity. Go figure. Here's a brief poll quote from a statement from the French Bishops' Conference. Quote, Right now, in some parishes in our diocese, in parish councils, and even in some diocesan bodies, there are more and more people with increasing responsibility who are members of the Lodge and Rosicrucians and who are devoted to witchcraft. Such a situation requires clarification. End quote. Yeah, you think. <laughs> clarification. How did you, the shepherds of France, let the situation in your country get so bad that you have many members of the church also being members of banned organizations or engaged in out-and-out -out devil worship. It blows the mind to think about it, it really does. But even better, the bishops have said that they want to not only reiterate what the church teaches, but also say they want to, quote, give precise pastoral directives to proclaim and defend the faith in Jesus Christ who has died, buried, and rose again, end quote. Well, at least there's that, though none of that sounds to me like reminding people that being a member of the Lodge is, frankly, excommunicable. You can't be a Catholic and be part of a satanic cult, after all. The head of that cult in France, one Grand Master Hoopsch, has openly stated that he wants nothing less than to profane the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, which fell victim to a mysterious fire on April 14th of last year, which, by the way, I was the only one I think to cover in the Catholic realm and say what everyone was thinking at the time, and I stand by it. The fire has still yet to have been satisfactorily explained. But the Grand Master of the Lodge wanted to transform it into a public cultural temple. Now, when I think public cultural temple, two things come to mind. Either a shopping mall, or something worse, or the false religion of Antichrist, complete with the elevation of man over God and a formalized system of self-worship that is in reality devil worship. That's what comes to mind for me, but again, I could be wrong. But as it turns out, the members of the France of the Lodge in France immediately plunged into activism after the fire to raise funds for the reconstruction of the cathedral, which is obviously one of the country's best-known national landmarks, if not the best. The Lodge has spoken publicly of this activism as a gesture of Republican solidarity, but obviously there is more going on here than meets the eye. Thankfully, the Archdiocese responded with a sermon from the bishop and a press release. In the press release, the Archdiocesan Press Office of the Archdiocese of Paris Emphasize the obvious connection, obvious to Catholics anyway, between the faith and culture. The Archbishop reiterated this recently in a homily where he said, quote, Separating culture and cultists is the result of ignorance or ideology. A culture without a cultist becomes an unculture. This shows the abysmal religious ignorance of our contemporaries. By excluding the term divine in the name of God from the public sphere, by referring to a lady that excludes any visible spiritual dimension, end quote. Remember, we're talking about the country that has also banned public religious symbols. I just want to throw that out there. For those who don't know, cultus is basically Latin for care, cultivation, and generally other synonyms for religious practice. So a bishop reminds us that you can't have a vibrant culture without religion. Given that culture literally has the word cult in it, it should be obvious that a religion-free culture is a dead culture. When cultures die, the opportunists arrive to fill the void. Which explains the absolute state of Europe right now, by the way. It explains what the demon worshippers at the Lodge have been doing by trying to seize the opportunity w with the Notre Dame debacle. At the core of this is not the machinations of the Lodge. I mean, that's honestly old news for Catholics who have been fighting against th that group for centuries. And entire libraries have been written about that subject. No, the real issue is the secularization of the faith that has made this situation possible. 
there's a growing misconception that Catholics can be members of the Lodge. For this, I return to you to a story I covered last December, where an Australian priest publicly said that you can be a Catholic and a member of that secretive group. That story involves one Father Hackett, who made some public statements that were really strange, about things like Catholics in the Lodge working together in solidarity for the public good, and that there is no penalty for being a Lodge member and a Catholic. <laughs> Here's his statement on that, and it was public. Quote, Perhaps most importantly for Catholic members of the Lodge, I can reiterate a directive first made by the Bishop's Conference in 1984 and affirmed this year. No penalty attaches to Catholic membership of the Lodge. The involvement of Catholics in the Lodge is foremost a moral matter, which should normally be dealt with personally and pastorally in the local parish. I suggest that where a local pastoral response is not consistent with this expectation and liturgical sacramental participation is made difficult or refused, that this might be referred to the local vicar general or to me. I will raise issues of Catholics and the Lodge during the annual meeting of Archdiocesan Vicars General, next due to be held in May 2018, to ensure that they are familiar with the preferred approach of the Bishop's Conference, end quote. Obviously, that's an old letter that would come back into relevance later when he was suspected of being a Lodge member himself, hence why it was covered in December. Now, remember what we said there, though, that the Bishop's Conference in 1984 issued a statement that it was a OK for Catholics to be members of the Lodge. Well, previous to that, in 1983, the church issued a, stu a document on directives dealing with the lodge and membership therein. So the Australian bishops actually just told the Vatican to shove their statement. But here's the basic principles of what the Vatican told the world, because they're rather sensical. One, the church's negative judgment on the lodge remains unchanged because its principles are irreconcilable with church's teaching, to put it mildly. Two, Catholics who join the Lodge are in the state of grave sin and may not receive Holy Communion. And three, no local ecclesiastical authority has a competence to derogate from these judgments of the sacred congregation, end quote. In other words, this is an area strictly for the Vatican to deal with, not some local bishop or priest who wants to make good with the Lodge because they have money and are all about the secular activist program that so many bishops have fallen in love with at the expense of the gospel. But to be clear, if you're part of the Lodge, you're in a state of grave sin and cannot receive communion. Simply confessing won't resolve the situation because you have to cut ties with the Lodge, which some Catholics have done and have gone public about their experience with the Lodge, often at great personal risk. And why is that? Well, well I'll let Pope Leo XIII explain it from this quote from his 1884 encyclical Humanum Genus. Quote, we wish it to be your rule, first of all, to tear away the mask from the Lodge and let it be seen as it really is, and by sermons and pastoral letters to instruct the people as to the artifices used by the societies of this kind in seducing men and enticing them into its ranks, and as to the depravity of their opinions and the wickedness of their acts. As our predecessors have many times repeated, let no man think he may for any reason whatsoever join the Lodge sect if he values his Catholic name and his eternal salvation as he ought to value them. End quote. The Church has taught that the Lodge is literally satanic, and that no Catholic may be a member of it. Which brings us back to this. A group the Church has always called wicked wants to take what is rightfully Church property, even if it technically is the property of the state of France who stole it from the Church a hundred years ago, and they want to profane it into some kind of secular cultural temple. And there are Catholics today who are a-okay with this, I assure you. How many Catholics who are members of the Lodge in France signed on to this idea? And how many of them are in positions of authority in the corrupt government of France? I want you to think about that and to remember that this is just another symbolic act of the corruption of the Western world we've seen unfolding as the Church has increasingly withdrawn from the fights that matter and in many ways even switch sides by joining in on the Lodge's goals of promoting a secular world order through the embracing of the plans of the NGOs and the overt attempt to turn the church into a non-profit humanitarian organization first and foremost. The talk of the new integral humanism and that wicked Abu Dhabi statement from last year should be, should be sufficient proof of that. I could go on and on, but if you're aware of the crisis in the church and the crisis in Western civilization, and have been for any length of time, you are aware that the two are linked and have a common thread. The Lodge, who managed to make their thinking mainstream in pretty much most every country of the world today. So instead, I'll end it here, and I'll ask what you think of this. Let me know. Personally, I applaud them for having at least having no shame with their plans. If only our bishops were so bold as to preach the gospel as forcefully as these guys preach their anti-gospel. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein.
Ave Maria.